Hi, welcome everybody. Before I start uh, with the actual presentation thing, um, let me just uh, let you welcome at Cibion. Um, before I start, let me, let me just tell you a little bit out about uh, Xibia. Xibia is a mostly a consulting company, um, and we have a slogan like most companies, and it's there. It's called development, software development done right. Everything we basically do is about doing stuff right, whether it be developing itself as in coding and uh, helping companies making better products, but also in regards to software process like Agile and Scrum, we have cool, uh, we do consulting in that. Uh, also on the architecture level and uh, more recently on a deployment level as well. Uh, some of you took the wrong entrance, I believe, to this uh, building and you found yourself at the Xebia Labs uh, department when they are actually creating a next level uh, deployment tool for companies that are well, uh, deploying a lots and lots of applications <coughs> and helping them achieve that in a way more efficient way as they're doing right now. I'm not talking about Jenkins level stuff, but stuff beyond that. So, yeah, everything in regards to software de development, uh, be it Java, be it Microsoft, uh, in the consulting, soft corner, or the hard coding stuff, that's uh, all we do here. And me, I am a software developer, a full stack as they uh, uh, call it these days. So uh, I'm doing both the coding on the front end and the back end and some process stuff in regards to, well, in my case, Jenkins configurations uh, and everything in between. And well, during the uh, last few years actually of doing web development, I noticed something that's basically, well, annoyed me a bit uh, uh, across every uh, project. And I'll tell you about it because at Xevia, we tend to still add function. Yeah. Uh, at Xibia, we tend to write web apps, and uh, we do this for customers that, well, tend to like the larger ones, banks, uh, uh, online shopping companies, uh, like Wacom or ING, and a couple more of those. And those applications tend to grow larger. We tend to have some uh, projects that scale for multiple years. Well, it's all going right. Uh, and those applications tend to grow large so, and, and easily with hundreds of different screens, all with different layouts. And that, yeah, that's kind of a nice, uh, uh, nice thing to develop. And now yeah, for those applications, we also need to support, we need to support uh, uh, this thing to be working on multiple platforms, not just desktop platforms, but mobile platforms as well. Uh, also on multiple browsers on these platforms, which might have multiple versions. And then even, uh, uh, Working on, working on different resolutions here as well. So that's kind of a challenge. And uh, at the same time, Xevia, we really care about agility and most importantly, quality. Uh, we want to have, have our application always working right, don't bug the users with bugs, and uh, so we create a lot of tests. And this could be unit tests, this could be integration tests, probably some Selenium, or if you're uh, developing uh, Angular applications, will be probably be a protractor test, all to make sure that the quality is high. <coughs> and to do this as, mu as much as, alt uh, automate this as much as possible. So we keep our development speed high. So we, uh, there's both the agility and the quality thing going on. So we care about the fast development time, so that means that automate as much as possible. Uh, don't try to not to introduce ma uh, manual processes there, and think about a developer workflow, development workflow. So that testers, uh, developers, and all those people that are working in the team, uh, UX guys as well, designers and uh, product owners, uh, all work together in, a mo in the smoothest possible way. However, in these applications, uh, which span a lot of screens, you eventually uh, end up with a lot of CSS stuff. As in, it has a visual component, and uh, what does this visual component, how is it built up using HTML and CSS? So you get a lot of uh, CSS rules there. And it tends to get a little bit problematic when your application runs into the hundreds of screens. At some point, you'll, cross, you'll get into uh, cross-browser issues. Or, more importantly, you'll get some <coughs> unintended consequences, such as a submit button, then someone changes the CSS rule, and then suddenly on some screen you completely forgot about, uh, you actually made like years ago, then suddenly the submit, button, uh, submit buttons are a bit smaller. 
Well, this is a notion change, but easily you can just turn up, turn some uh, screens upside down if you do it wrongly, or just break layout. And you will probably no, won't see this. Your users will see this. You don't, you're not checking every screen out there because that doesn't work. If you uh, have an application which spans hundreds of, uh, of screens, you're not going to click through every one of them in every browser, in every version, on every platform before you go into a release. It slows you down too much. So we need to have something better. And as a developer, my normal uh, response to having a problem that is boring and needs to be fixed, or at least having a manual process that's boring and needs to be fixed, I say, well, let's make a smart script or automate something. Make the problem go away. Sadly, cannot really do that here because how would your script or your test know whether or not something looks good or looks bad? So how do we fix this? Well, one way is to say uh, uh, let's just automate everything that we can automate, namely uh, navigating through the screens and detecting any differences, and then do a manual step there to analyze whether or not a, a change is deemed good or bad. So, because we care about development speed, uh, we do want to have these manual steps. We need to have them. Sadly, we don't have this revolutionary uh, AI that can just detect beauty. I mean, Facebook is working on it, obviously, but it's not there yet, so we need a solution now. Uh, so we're going to introduce some manual steps, but they need to be as painless as possible. You should increase the quality of your application without slowing down your development speed too much because you're introducing a manual step, so you need to think about how to make this manual step as painless as possible. So, you need a tool that uh, minimizes the false positives and negatives, so everything it finds should be relevant, and everything it doesn't find should not be a problem. We need to think about workflow, development, and testers, and all those other rules, roles in a uh, uh, development project uh, need to work together in a smooth way. And the tooling should be of a certain quality, meaning that it should be easy to make the test, it should be easy to run them and debug them, and it should be easy to analyze the test results. So with all these requirements in place, not just finding the bugs, but also thinking about workflow and actual uh, a way to actually well, maintain this scale of checking all these screens, we started working on something. We started looking at uh, applications that didn't find the right fit, so yeah, we created one. We start creating one, and it's called Visual Review. Visual Review is an open source product, uh, which we see as a solution for catching and, catching and dealing with these visual regressions, visual bugs, in your application, and all together uh, using, it, uh, using it as part of your workflow. So how, how does it work? Well, say you have a bunch of test scripts. Those could be Selenium test scripts, because you're doing it in a browser. Could easily be a protractor test script. And this, using Selenium, you'll probably be uh, interacting with a browser, or if you're using Selenium Grid, multiple browsers. And somewhere in your script, you're going to say, make me a screenshot with this name. This screenshot is then sent to something we call a visual review server, which would be running either on the internet or uh, on your local network. So this is actually possible in a corporate environment where internet access is basically a luxury sometimes. Uh, this server will then compare this screenshot with a previous version, previous accepted version, and writes down the differences. So this is basically the automatic part of your process. And then <coughs> the human comes in and starts analyzing these results and accepting and, uh, or rejecting every change made. So what does this look like? See. Um, for this demo, I'm going to uh, use a little Twitter client, uh, Twitter clone actually, uh, we created. Can you see it? Oh. Kind of in the way. Um, I'm going to use a little demo application here uh, called Deep Thoughts, which is basically a Twitter client where you can just type in a thought you just had and submit it here. And if I click on the submit button without uh, entering anything, you know, it gives you a little error. Well, this is an, an Angular application. Who, uh, who's been working on Angular recently, by the way? Not that many people, okay. Uh, Angular has its own uh, set of tools for end-to-end -end testing. 
and one of them is called Protractor, which I mentioned earlier, which is basically an Angular-friendly wrapper around Selenium. Do you know Selenium? Must be, okay. Uh, so Selenium is the tool to, in which you can say, start, me, start a browser for me, click on that, evaluate this little text, and this is how you uh, can test your application in an actual browser environment. So, because it's an Angular application, I've got a protractor configuration here. Um, this is a basic protractor configuration which simply says these are the script files you're going to use, this is the browser you're going to... Is this readable, by the way, for everyone? Yeah. Uh, this is the browser I'm going to use, etc., etc., etc. So, from a command line, I can now actually now just increase it a little bit. Uh, I can now actually run this uh, protractor script saying and then protractor.ts. So I'm taking this configuration. What it will do is start a Firefox browser, then click through a bunch of screens, and then, well, there you are. Then you tested your application. So this, the, the, the script is actually running is simply saying open a browser, go to this URL, go to this URL, and click on something. And I could do some evaluations here saying this text should be there and the button should have this color and that kind of stuff. Well, to use it in a visual, for, with Visual Review, we need to add something. So first, um, because it's a, 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 a JavaScript project and this is actual NPM level stuff, uh, I'm going to uh, add a dependency to my project called Visual Review Protractor. So now, with this in place, I can actually uh, send the screenshots from my protector test. Also, I need to have the visual review server running. So if you noticed here, I've already downloaded it, extracted the zip, and run startup to sh, so it's already there. And now I'm actually, uh, yeah, then, then I need to so do some additional uh, configuration to my protector JS to my protector configuration. So here is an updated version of my protector configuration saying where is the visual review server located? Well, it's on my own machine, so it's localhost, and the default port is 7000. Uh, and I'm putting some uh, stuff here saying, yeah, uh, start when you're starting your test, tell visual review that you're starting a test with this project name and this suite name. And the suite name, uh, it, project names and suite names is simply a grouping of tests. So you could have multiple projects uh, running all, all kinds of tests on the same server. And at the end saying, okay, you're done, clean up some stuff. Well, this, with this configuration in place, I can now extend my specification, my uh, script, my test, test script, to say, well, just give me an instance of my visual review API and make me a screenshot called main. And I'll do the same thing when I click uh, the submit button. Without the text, then you get an error. So I'm calling it main with error. And then if I go to the stats page, which is here, which shows me a number of plots, uh, I want to make a screenshot out of that as well. All to make sure that the next time someone changes something, just to see whether or not there's a change on the screen that shouldn't be there, or if all the changes someone made are still, well, acceptable, or as intended. So now I can actually run this script, saying node modules in protector, now I use my protector VR, which is visual review, the configuration, and it starts running Firefox again, goes through all the screens, but now it actually sends some screenshots as well. And then here it says, well, your test is finished, your results can be viewed at this URL. So if I go to this URL, should be seeing Visual Review. Ta -da, this is the web GUI of Visual Review. And it will uh, show me all the screenshots I just made. Uh, it should be comparing it to a previous version, but as this is a fresh installation, I don't have a previous version. So now I'm going to create a baseline of screenshots at, uh, to which uh, every future run will be comparing screenshots against. So I'm going through all my uh, uh, screens here. Uh, I can do this by mouse or I can use uh, my keyboard. So I'm going to use the keyboard here. This is the, the index page. Well, it looks good. Well, uh, now it's uh, here. You see the color all is gray. And I, with this uh, little menu, I can say, well, I'm, this screen looks fine. It's good. 
I can also reject the screenshot. That will mean that it gets a special status and it won't update the baseline. So if I, uh, for instance, say, well, this screen looks bad, someone needs to take a look at it, I just say reject, and then later on, uh, someone in my team could visit this page and just filter on, just give me all the rejected screenshots, and then go through them and know that, okay, I need to work on this screen, and this is the, the problem there. And so you have a workflow for more roles in your team. But in this case, it actually looks good. Next screenshots, well, yeah, there's an error, but it's fine. Pressing A, so I can go to the next one. And this one looks fine as well. So everything is good. Now, take a few weeks. Uh, uh, go a few weeks in the future. Someone's going to change your application. In this case, uh, someone says, well, the style of the error we got here, it's a bit too large. could be a little bit smaller. So in this case, I'm going to change my application and say, well, let's just change the the, the style of the error. So I just did that, and now it's a little bit smaller. So if I run the test again, the, the visual review test, <coughs> it should notice this change and notify you that, oh, there is something different here. So let's go through this again. Makes the screenshots, and it says again, yeah, well, the, here are the results. Paste this, or I can look through all the screens and say, well, just show me the second one. Yeah, just gonna page it. And here it actually shows me only the screenshot that actually has a change. It shows me that about 19% of the uh, uh, of the screenshot ha has been changed. And it shows it shows me all kinds of indicators that something uh, there is a little bit different than it was before. I can sh just turn this off and go through the baseline one and the actual one. And here you see, yeah, something is going wrong with, or something changed actually with the error message. And here, again, I can say, well, do I find this acceptable or not? And this way, you know, yeah, there's only one screen change, so it's fine. But if this style actually had some um, consequence for another screen, then we could see this. Otherwise, it would be completely invisible. You wouldn't know, because you're only looking at the screen you actually change on. And uh, because it's Selenium, it's also possible to see this one in different browsers as well. So you can see the effects on Internet Explorer and on Chrome without having to click through all of them. Visual Review supports having multiple baselines for every browser you use, so you can do that as well. Still with me? No. no. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this, this, this is the, 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 the actual interface for accepting and rejecting uh, the screenshots and the filtering for getting specific statuses uh, for whatever uh, workflow you can use. And let's go back to the thing. So, this is the first, you're basically looking at the, the first uh, stable version of Visual Review up for download now on GitHub. And so what can it do? Uh, it accepts uh, uh, an upload of screenshots. And there's one little thing here, from any source. Uh, this means that uh, the visual review simply says, give me images. I don't care where they came from. It doesn't have to be a web application. It can also be a print out of a PDF. So you can check a PDF layout here. Uh, it could also be a Flash application. I actually had someone telling me, ah, I can use this for a Flash application. Are you still building those? But yeah, apparently. So. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, you can use that as well. Uh, mobile stuff as well, Android applications with uh, all the various aspect ratios and models and stuff like that. It, it doesn't still look good. You can check it here. And because it's an, uh, uh, it ex exposes this functionality using a simple REST API, uh, if there's something that we thought didn't thought, think, uh, think of uh, uh, supporting, you can simply make, make something yourself doing the uploads. So it's extensible as far as you want it to. Uh, so yeah, uh, it can upload and compare screenshots from any source. Uh, <coughs> it's, it supports screenshot baselines, all grouped in suites and projects. And you can accept and reject screenshots, updating that same baseline. And there's a little filter there, which is uh, sort of, yeah. Also, um, just to, in, in this demo, we also use something called Visual Review Protector, which is basically an API for sending screenshots from a protector test. Currently we only have the protector uh, one, but it would be net just as easy to make a Selenium Java one. Uh, and as it's open source, if you think uh, we're taking too long, you can do it yourself as well. 
So, what we're currently focusing on is, uh, uh, well, we just released the, the first stable version, so the fo focus on development right now is to do some GUI stuff, uh, mm -hmm. Zoom controls, and we've got some pull requests for that as well, uh, currently, we're still working on it. Uh, Jenkins integration, which is integration with a build server, and Jenkins, because, well, we're working with Jenkins at, at, this, pro at this moment. Um, but the Jenkins integration will be a little bit different than what you used to. In normal tests, you'll have uh, running, for instance, a unit test, and then there's a test report, and that's that. But in this case, the actual test report will change over time because people will be accepting and rejecting stuff. So you're going to need some special plugin there that just pulls the uh, Visual Review server or gets me gets messages from the Visual Review uh, server showing you that there is something that someone needs to take a look at. So as I see it, you just have a for instance, you have a build monitor somewhere near your team, and then something flashes red or yellow if there is a screenshot been changed, or if there is a difference being spotted. So yeah, we're going to work on that as well. And uh, the Protector API needs some work there. There are sadly there is some uh, problem with uh, Chrome right now, and it's actually been there for about three years. So they're not going to fix it anytime soon. And, um, when you create a screenshot on a Chrome browser, or actually a WebKit browser, uh, it will only show you the stuff you are seeing. Whereas if you do it in Firefox, then you get the entire page. There are uh, some workarounds for this, um, so we're working on that. But yeah, that's currently a limitation uh, with Chrome browsers. And there are other tools that make screenshots uh, from browsers, and they suffer the same problem. So. And some of them are uh, using um, workarounds where they just scroll to a, a different part of the page, make a screenshot, scroll, and make a screenshot, which kind of works until you have fixed layout elements on your page, then it becomes a problem. Or if there's some JavaScript going on that tries to scroll something into view. So, yeah, that's a workaround. The actual fix would be Chrome, fix your stuff. Uh, there's a uh, bug open yeah, well, for three or four years and basically every month someone says Why, when are you going to fix this? So I don't think it has a, uh, uh, a, it's a virtual screen which is uh, yeah. 10,000 pixels high. That's an awesome, yeah, that's more of a, uh, that wouldn't be something that Visual Review does but it could be in your uh, setup of your uh, VMs uh, for instance. You can do that. Yeah, so that's a workaround but if your pages are a little bit different then yeah, you can do something, but I'd rather just not, to think, not having to think about it. So if you're going to make screenshots at first, well, Firefox is the easiest one because it takes the full, uh, the full page. And for Chrome, you're going to probably need to do something. And also, um, we want to include, or, yeah, include, include regions and exclude regions, saying that only make a screenshot of this part of the page or ignore that little banner there because I don't care what the difference is. So, um, we're also thinking about doing, uh, uh, supporting a pull request workflow, which is kind of interesting. Um, I'm guessing most, most of you guys have seen GitHub before. Uh, they have this uh, pull request uh, workflow, also stash some local uh, installable stuff uh, is out there, in which you can say, I've got a branch with code, and I want to put this in master, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this immediately. I want to make a pull request, which basically means I want to put this code into master. Please do a review. Of a, of a, mostly that's a code review and it's going to run some tests. Well, the actual name, Visual Review, is about making a, an additional review step during a pull request, namely a visual review, showing this code changes these and these and these screens. So, yeah, we want to support that as well. Um, and, yeah, some image file management, if you're making a lot of screenshots, then a lot of files are being created. That takes a lot of bit hard disk space, so you need some cleanup there. So, it's an open source project, it's there for you to download it and check it out. Please let us know what, we, uh, uh, what you find. Um, this project is basically there, not just for us to use, but to actually have a good tool out there because I'm really missing a tool that does not only screenshot making, because there's a lot of tools that do that, but actual thinking, actually thinking about the workflow solution. I mean, a lot of tools, they simply say, yeah, there's a command line tool, and then all the flow stuff around it, you need to do it yourself. So I really want to have a good solution for this, so please let us know if this is a good solution for you, that we're on the right track. And, well, yeah, it's there. <laughs> Basically, well, yeah, there's a lot of time left. So, uh, are there any questions? I was wondering, in, in, uh, on average,
research project that you're doing? Uh, how many uh, uh, test environments do you uh, define? Like uh, sc screen sizes and, and browsers and. No, well, we're, uh, actually, uh, since we got this uh, uh, last stable version, we're uh, starting to introduce it. But we're going to use at least well, one or maybe two uh, browsers just to get a good indication what has been changed. Okay. So I'd, li I'd like to think that um, when you change something on the screen and then Chrome says, well, okay, but because you have a combination of co uh, components that you didn't test, something changed there, it's probably going to be on Internet Explorer as well. So. Yeah, but we're starting there and see what happens. So for us, it's kind of an exploration uh, here as well. Hence the call for feedback because we want to know other people's experiences. Do you check all the screens yourself manually? Uh, only the ones that actually have a change. Yeah, yeah you yeah. don't check them. No, because if, if the system says there is no change, you might expect there is no change. And then yeah. the, and the, the changes are detected by pixels. So. I mean, if you, if you don't do this, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, uh, I've seen some companies actually u having this room full of computers, you know, and clicking through every screen on different browsers. It's actually kind of fine when you have a small amount of screens, and you can get away with that, but when your application just grows and grows and grows, when you hit about 20 to 30 screens, times the amount of browsers, times all the platforms and versions, yeah, then you need something better. And that's where this uh, thing comes in. Does it work with mobile, on all mobile phones and tablets? Uh, it simply wants you to send screenshots. So if you can get Selenium as far to generate these screenshots, then you're there. Okay. But it's currently, yeah. So it's possible. Yeah. So it doesn't really make any assumptions on if it's a web application or a mobile application. <coughs> no. So are you already using this somewhere in production? In we're about to start. <laughs> yeah. So we're actually we did. It's for us as an exploration as well. So uh, and the Jenkins plugin is one of those things we're going to create for that, uh, just to make sure that it's uh, it's working in a in a cool workflow. Uh, <coughs> at our application. So your the visual review server would then send back like well there are two uh, differences for example and then just stop the yeah, 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 yeah. Or uh, have an, uh, you could stop the deployment there, uh, or simply have a build that just pulls the server all the time, or in another, in another system, <coughs> or the, the other way around, uh, saying that someone found a difference, stop the deployment. That might be a thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's that's what we're looking at. Okay. Can you simulate states? States from like uh, over, uh, active, click. It's uh, what Selenium does. I mean, uh, the, the, it's basically um, because it's simply a screenshot uh, uh, comparison. Yeah, if, if Selenium can do that, then you can uh, simulate it. Or some other tool. I mean, Selenium is the, the thing right now, but there might be something else that does it better. Maybe some Chrome specific tool that might make something like that in the future. Who knows? If, if there's an. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but if you have an upgrade of Firefox, uh, does it generate uh, any differences in, in, in screenshots? Because if, uh, if it's one pixel uh, yeah. different, I know uh, there is. Uh, there might be if they change the rendering a bit. Um, but what I would, yeah, yeah, it, it might be changing. But usually they don't change the rendering that much, unless you have this big uh, change like Chrome uh, uh, recently yeah. did with the Blink engine. Although I think the anti-aliasing didn't really change there. But one of the things you, you might try is to have a, a, a sort of pixel threshold there. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, well, one pixel, that's a little bit too precise. Maybe you can do stuff with the risk that you're going to miss something. So yeah. there, is some, uh, yeah, there is some danger there, or at least a, a trade-off there. Yeah, if I may add, I'm, I'm also working on this uh, project. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the visual review protector. And there's an example in there which you can easily use that uh, just visits your web page and makes a screenshot. And you can just add a couple of pages and then try it out very easily. Mm. If you're interested, yeah. I was just looking at that.
Thanks very much.